Hello, everyone, and welcome to worship at Bread of Life, Deaf Lutheran Church. We are glad that you are here today with us. My name is Michelle Lewis, and I am the pastor here. I'm Lori Fuller. I'm a seminary student on my way to becoming a pastor. I'm David Evans, the interpreter today. We are so glad that you have joined us in worship and we are uh, continue to be amazed at how God gathers us together to encourage us and to lead us to live lives of faith and trust um, in a world where faith and trust are hard to find. We are recording our worship today, it's Friday afternoon, and so we still don't know the results of the election, and so, we want to just recognize that we know that is causing a lot of stress in everyone's life because it means there's so much unknown um, about just like just in simple terms of what's happening with the election, but also with what that means for the next couple of months and then the next several years in the life of our country. And so as leaders here in worship today, we just want to make sure you know we're praying for you and we're praying for our country. We're praying um, in particular that a sense of calm and peace can guide us. And we are praying in particular too for people who feel afraid. And there are a lot of people right now who are fearful and people are experiencing a lot of anxiety. So as we've done in the last couple of weeks, we really want to encourage you to turn off social media, to make sure you are getting outside or that you're moving around, um, that you're focusing on things that give you life and help you feel good um, so that you are caring for yourself because we can't care for others if we don't take care of ourselves. So know that those thoughts and prayers are with us here as we're leading worship today um, because we are unsure what the next few days, what the next few weeks, what the next few months are going to hold. So with that, we invite you into our call to worship. Um, and there's opportunity to join in um, and respond together. And so even though we're all in our own homes uh, worshiping, we can join in together and um, as worship leaders, we'll help you know when uh, we're doing that, so. Let us enter into worship. In the beginning and now and forever, God, you are the maker you are the child among us, and you are the spirit breathing life into us. Dancing together, working together, belonging to each other. In the beginning, and now and forever, God created the earth 
and all its inhabitants, the plants and animals and the people. Dancing together, working together, belonging to one another. We are all connected because God is kind and good. From the beginning until now, and it will be forever that we are united in God's good creation. We dance with the trees in the field and the stars in the heavens. We stand with the mountains and we are steady like the seas. We worship you, God, in the beginning, now and forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. prayer for the day. God, you created the seas, sky, and land. Jonah turned to run from you still you show Jonah that no one and nothing can hide from your presence. You are in all things and love all things. Reveal your presence and help us share your compassion and grace here in the world. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is our Redeemer, showing your love flawlessly. Amen. Today's Bible lesson is in Jonah. And the Lord's word came to Jonah, Amadi's son. Get up and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it. For their evil has come to my attention. So Jonah got up to flee to Tarshish, to flee from the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship headed for Tarshish. Jonah paid the fare and went aboard to go with them to Tarshish, away from the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea so that there was a great storm on the sea. The ship looked like it might be broken to pieces. The sailors were terrified and each one cried out to their own God. They hurled the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to make it lighter. Now Jonah had gone below deck to lie down and was in a deep sleep. The ship's captain came and said, how can you possibly be sleeping so deeply? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps the God will give some thought to us so that we won't perish. Meanwhile, the sailors said to one another, Let's cast lots or roll dice so that we might learn who is to blame for what is happening. They cast lots and the lot fell to Jonah. And so they said to him, tell us, since you're the cause of this evil happening, what did you do and where are you from? 
what's your country and of what people are you? And Jonah said to them, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the sailors were terrified and said to Jonah, what have you done? The sailors knew that Jonah was fleeing from the Lord because that is what Jonah told them. They said to him, what will we do about the sea that will become calm around us? The sea was continuing to rage. Jonah said to them, pick me up and hurl me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm around you. I know that it is my fault that the great storm has come upon you. The sailors rowed to reach dry land, but couldn't manage it because the sea continued to rage against them. So they called on the Lord saying, please, Lord, don't let us perish on account of this man's life and don't blame us for innocent blood. You are the Lord, whatever you want, you can do. Then they picked Jonah up and hurled him into the sea and the sea ceased raging. The sailors worshiped the Lord with a profound reverence and they offered sacrifice to the Lord and made solemn promises. Meanwhile, the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah. Jonah stayed in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. The Lord's word came to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to Nineveh, that great city, and declare against it the proclamation that I am commanding you. And Jonah got up and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's word. Now Nineveh was indeed an enormous city, and three days walk across. Jonah started into the city, walking one day, and cried out, Just forty more days, and Nineveh will be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on mourning clothes, from the greatest to the least significant. When word of it reached the king of Nineveh, he got up from his throne, stripped himself of his robe, and covered himself with mourning clothes, and sat in ashes. Then the king announced, In Nineveh, by decree of the king and the king's officials, neither human nor animal, cattle nor flock, will taste anything, no grazing and no drinking water. Let humans and animals alike put on mourning clothes and let them call upon God forcefully and let all persons stop their evil behavior and the violence that's under their control. The king thought, who knows? God may see this and turn from wrath so that we might not perish. God saw what they were doing, that they had ceased their evil behavior. So God stopped planning to destroy them and did not destroy Nineveh. But Jonah, thought this was utterly wrong and became angry. Jonah prayed to the Lord, Come on, Lord! Wasn't this precisely my point when I was back in my own land? This is why I fled to Tarshish earlier. I know that you're a merciful and compassionate God, very patient, full of faithful love, and not willing to destroy. At this point, Lord, you might as well just take my life from me because it would be better for me to die than to live. And the Lord responded, is your anger a good thing? But Jonah went out from the city and sat down east of the city. 
and there he made himself a hut and sat under it in the shade to see what would happen to the city. And then the Lord provided a shrub and it grew up over Jonah, providing shade for his head and saving him from his misery. Jonah was very happy about the shrub. But, but God provided a worm the next day at dawn and it attacked the shrub so that the shrub died. Then, as the sun rose, God provided a dry east wind, and the sun beat down on Jonah's head so that he became faint. Jonah begged to die, saying, it is better for me to die than live. Jonah, God said to Jonah, is your anger about the shrub a good thing? Jonah said, yes, my anger is good, even to the point of death. But the Lord said, you were concerned about the shrub, but you didn't plant it nor take care of it. The shrub grew in a night and perished in a night. Yet you were angry with me to care for Nineveh. Why do you insist that I withhold compassion for Nineveh? It is a huge city and more than 120,000 people live there and also many animals. They are persons who can't tell their right hand from their left. Why do you insist that I hold withhold compassion from Nineveh? Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. In that Bible passage, we read about Jonah. Jonah does not obey God, but instead flees from God. God brings Jonah back to the original call, which eventually Jonah follows. The point is about doing God's will and not ours, because God knows what's best for us. So we have a limited view. We don't see the big picture. God, however, sees all and knows what's going on. God knows what's best for us. So we need to have faith. Now, this passage is a challenge for me. As with any text that we read, we should always think about what does this passage say to us about God? Now, in this specific passage, we notice three different things. First, that God calls us to do surprising things and sometimes maybe even ridiculous seeming things. Second, is that God is on this journey with us. Even when we're being stubborn, even when we're rebelling, like Jonah did, we see God's loving presence does not give up. And Jonah's even given a second chance to follow the call and make things right. And that's a good thing for us because we make mistakes. And even when we do, God is still with us, providing chance after chance until we finally follow God's will. And then the third thing is that God's love for us is absolutely amazing. It's indescribable. God loves us more deeply than we can possibly imagine. Now, we love one another, sure, but the love that we have for one another, even at its greatest, is nothing when compared to God's love for us. So how does that apply to us? Well, first, we need to remember 
to look to God no matter what we do. With all our heart, with our soul, with our mind, we have to keep our eyes on God. Not looking to the world first. Not looking to those things that divide us. Like who's a Republican, and who's a Democrat, and who's wearing a mask and who's not masking. Instead of looking at the things that divide us, we first look to God and meditate on God's word. Applying it to our lives and inscribing it in our hearts. We see many times in the three years of Jesus's ministry in the New Testament that Jesus takes care of himself. He goes to pray with the disciples, or he goes to the mountain to pray alone, or in the garden he prays alone. But Jesus made sure that he had time with God in God's presence. And that's an important lesson that we need time in God's presence too. And last week, Pastor Michelle provided some great ways for us to take care of ourselves. One of them was getting out, moving around, being physically active rather than staying indoors and stationary. Make sure that your body's getting enough movement because that it feels good. Find a hobby that you can enjoy. Socialize with the people who you really like to be around. And have at least one place that's yours where you can go and feel connected, whether that's a closet in your home, uh, a corner in one of the rooms in your home, just somewhere where you can find calm and serenity and recenter yourself without distraction. And this is not in a room where the TV's on. This is somewhere that brings calm and peace to us because then it's easier to see what God is asking us to do. When we're distracted and when we're anxiety ridden, it's harder to be in God's presence. So take care of yourselves, spend time with God. And God's with us in this journey, just like God was with Jonah. God loves us so much that no matter what we face, big or small, God's still right there with us. No matter the size of the obstacles that we might encounter, God's there. The third thing is that God's love for you and your neighbor is amazing. God loves me and my neighbor too. Because each of us was made in God's image. God's love is amazing and it's for all people. Now, admittedly, Sometimes stepping out in God's love can be scary because we don't know what's going to happen. Anytime we encounter the unknown, it can feel scary. So when we feel fear, we employ faith. We take those steps, trusting in spite of the fear. Even though we don't know what's going to happen, we can see as far as our feet. And that gives us the ability to take the next step and the next 
and the one after that, even though we can't see where those steps are ultimately going to lead. And sometimes we can't even see past our own feet. But the more we practice trusting and taking those steps, the stronger our faith becomes because we see that God is in fact with us, that God has been there the whole time. And we're able to overcome the fear that we feel. And then you experience God's faithfulness. Rather than hiding from whatever it is that we fear and hoping it's going to go away, we can face it with God right there with us. Now, maybe this was similar to what Jonah experienced when he was first called to go to Nineveh because uh, it's possible there was judgment. And maybe we're like Jonah in that way too. We, we judge people. Like I was just talking about um, looking at political differences and those things that divide us, we need to remember that God loves all of us. Now, I wonder how many of you have kids, maybe they're grown, or maybe some of you are just raising a family now. I have three, and um, one is an adult, and the two younger ones are still kids. And of course, we try to teach our kids right from wrong. We try to guide their decisions and help them know how to make their way in life. But occasionally, things go awry. And we don't give up on our kids. We continue to teach them again and again. I'm never gonna give up on my kids. And sometimes the kids haven't learned what's good for them. And um, one example I have about that is ice cream. My middle daughter, Riley absolutely loves ice cream, and she asks for it every single meal. We've even got these little ice cream statue toys in our home. And given the opportunity, she'd have a big old bowl of ice cream every chance she got. But as a parent, I know that that's not good for her. It's not healthy, so I can't let her do that. She'll have an upset tummy, she'll get sick. She needs to eat balanced, healthy foods. And maybe on occasion, ice cream is fine. But having ice cream all day, every day is not okay. But of course, children don't know this. And so as parents, we explain these things to them. We instruct them in the ways. Uh, We tell them about how it's full of sugar and if they eat too much, then they'll become sick and not feel well. And slowly but surely, our kids learn. Now, I feel like this is probably very similar to the way God interacts with us as we make mistakes. God is so patient with me, even though I stumble, I fall, I make mistakes. Even now, as a seminary student, I still make mistakes, but I can learn from my mistakes and change and grow because that's what we always do. We continue to learn and grow. And God is right there with us the whole time, guiding you, guiding me, teaching you, just like God teaches me the way that God wants us to go. Imagine if Jonah hadn't gone and done what God had called him to do. The people of Nineveh were ignorant of God's love. And they would have totally missed out on that. Fortunately, Jonah followed God's call, which is a lesson for us. And I'm not trying to tell you that it's easy. Doing God's will isn't easy sometimes. But when we're willing the results are always so much more than we could have imagined. So I want to encourage you, follow God's call and be ready for the amazing things that God's going to do in your life and in the lives of those around you. Because God is with you on the journey and God's love for you is deep. 
for each and every one of you out there watching and for me. So remember, faith, and keep your eyes on God first rather than the world. Because when we look up, we're more able to take care of ourselves. And then in turn, we can help and serve others. In Jesus' name. Now the prayer for others. Take three deep breaths. God, you breathed life into us, and with every breath, we thank you. Breathing in, we are grateful that you care about us. Breathing out, we commit to join you in caring for creation. You created the world with relationships. Now relationships are fractured. We come to you seeking your healing. for the places and people torn apart by violence, for the bodies and minds suffering, for the earth groaning under our weight. We come to you seeking your justice. For those whose voices have been silenced for those whose lives have been stolen, for those whose worth is debated. With the election to have rules and laws kept to ensure justice. We come to you seeking your peace. For those who live under daily pressure of expectations. For those whose lives are marked by hatred and division. For those who feel they are barely hanging on. For people experiencing anxiety and panic attacks in this time of heightened tension and unknown. We come to you seeking your abundance. For those whose bodies need nourishment they cannot provide. For those who struggle each day for crumbs. For those who believe they are flawed, unlovable, and not enough. We come to you seeking your help for all who cannot breathe. For people pressed down by the weight of racism. For people fighting disease. For people worrying about air quality. God, allow your breath of life to blow through our world bringing fullness and hope and joy. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
At this time, we invite you to share the piece with one another. Uh, you might need to get out your directory book, find someone's name and their numbers. You can send a text message or maybe um, after worship VP call, um, or maybe you wanna write a note, a card and send a card to somebody to let them know, I'm thinking of you. Uh, at this time of coronavirus, it's really hard to um, stay in touch and to feel that connection with one another. And so every week we remind ourselves that we have peace with God. And then we invite one another to take time to share that peace so that other people know God loves us. And that means we have peace with God. And we have peace with God because God is generous and good. And as Lori said, God's love, the love that God has for us is, is unimaginable. And because God is generous, then we, we get to be generous in our lives too. And so every week we ask you to consider how is God calling you to be generous this week? What is God inviting you to do? And one of the opportunities that we like to ask you to consider every week is that you would share some of your financial resources, some of your money, Share some of that with Bread of Life. Because even though our church building is closed right now, our church is still doing all kinds of things. We are still doing what God has called us to do, which is this. It is to let the world know that God loves deaf people and their families. And here at Bread of Life, we love deaf people and their families too. So if you're able to share some of your money this week, please send a check to Bread of Life or you can make a donation through PayPal. And we will continue to do this calling to work on this mission that God has given to us. Now let us pray. God, you are creator. You have given us this place where we can succeed when we work side by side with you. You call us into relationship with all things. As you have provided for us, you have asked us to join in your work. As a sign of our gratitude, we bring you our offering, the fruit of our labor. When we give as you give, we are participating in your blessing of the world. And now we will pray the Lord's Prayer and there will be no interpretation. As we um, are amazed that God gathers us together in worship, we are also amazed that God sends us out. We're not scattered in the world. Instead, God sends each one of us to a special place, a place that God needs us to go to. 
like Jonah. God needed Jonah to go to Nineveh. And God needs you and me to go to the places where we live, where we work, where we go to school, where our kids are, all of those different places. God sends us there. So just as God gathers us together in worship, God sends us out into the world. And so as you are sent, receive this blessing. God knows us fully. And God loves us fully. God is always near. And just as you are, God loves you. Even when we make mistakes, God loves us yesterday, today, and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen.